The project we have been doing is Key Quarter Tower, close to Circular Key in Sydney. This building has been a transformation of an existing high-rise in a completely new way. It hasn't been done in this size here before. We think it's going to be a model for how to uh, transform existing uh, high-rises into new high-rises in the future. The whole design is a result of an international competition. We were invited uh, to it. And the challenge was, in just in front of the tower, is uh, uh, a listed building, the first high-rise in Sydney, in Australia. That's 100 meter tall. A high-rise is minimum 100 meter tall. We built a tower that's uh, twice that height. Uh, but that was, of course, an obstacle that we had a building just in front of it. Uh, the qualities of the area is that in front of uh, the building, we have the, the opera building, designed by another Danish architect, Jan Utzon. The only building that has, has been a symbol for not only Sydney, but for Australia as well, for a whole country. And uh, we have so much respect for that building that we wanted to play up to Utsan. Utsan says that, um, was asked, why did you design the building uh, the way he did? And then he took up a matchbox and say, is that interesting when he looked around? In other words, he didn't want to build a square building. He wanted to build something sculptural. And we took that challenge up. We wanted to do something uh, sculptural, but we wanted to do it in an informed way, so to speak, that everything we have done uh, with the sculpture here has to do with how the building performs, how the views are out from the building, uh, and how we can work with the interior connected to the exterior. The old tower was uh, 50,000 square meters. The new one is double that size, 100,000 square meters. So we had to double the square meters. So what we did was twisting the building so it didn't look into the building in front of it and twisting around so when it became higher than uh, the old building, it twisted the other way. Uh, so it got the optimal views. At the same time, there was an envelope that we had to be within from the city side. We should not make a bigger shadow over a park behind it than the existing building did. And that's another reason why we twisted the building we, the way we twisted. So it sort of twisted around. So when you see it from one angle, it's very slim. Another angle is very big. But the slim angle is where the shadow comes. Normally, when you go into a high rise, you just stack floors. So when you have to go from one floor to the next floor, you have to take the elevator. When you come to a hotel, even if, if you have to go from one floor to the next floor, you take the elevator. We try to prevent that because elevators are not good means for people to interact. So we wanted to have staircases in the high rise as well. And we wanted to have a village feeling within the high rise and an open atrium from where you can look from one floor to the next floor. That's the only way to um, for, for an organization to have a team spirit. It is when you have visual contact between the people that works in the, uh, in the organization. So we work with these atriums that all had a, an internal staircase. Uh, and the idea is if you only have to go three floors, you take, of course, the staircase up and, and down, and you don't go to the elevator. Another thing is that we wanted to achieve is when you come out of the elevator right away, you have the view. Normally, when you go into a high rise, you take the elevator up and you, you, and you meet a wall when you come out. You see that a lot. And you don't know, am I in the fifth floor or in the basement? Here we wanted to be sure that people that come out of the elevator would have the view right away so they know where they are and they get, get this wonderful feeling of being high up. When you're high up, you want to have the best views as well. High-rises are the solution in big cities. And, uh, and a high-rise should be placed in a place where there's a traffic knot, where there's a lot of different transportation coming to. So you don't uh, need to um, travel very far. Uh, and especially this place where we have built the QQT tower is where 
it's the biggest transportation node in in in, uh, in Sydney. It's where the boats comes in, the trains comes in, the motorway and the trams. Everything comes to this point here, so it is the right place to um, to place a big high rise. The old high rise had 4,500 people working in it. That's a lot of people. This building has 9,900 people working in it. So it is a, it's more than a village, it's a town that's actually working in this building here. But all the people have means to come to the place. So it makes sense to identify in this way. And it makes, and that's a sustainable way of thinking, I think. We live in a world where sustainability is a big word, of course, and transformation is very much part of that. If you want to build in London, for example, you cannot pull anything down without uh, analyzing the carbon result of that. That's not only the carbon. The carbon is, I can't remember how many tons, it's a tremendous amount of uh, tons of carbon we save in this way here. But it's also time, and time is money. So we could pull down just a little part of the facade that we had to pull down, and then we could start building on the old structure, putting the facade on while we were building the new structure as well. So they saved a lot of time, uh, and in that way, uh, a lot of uh, money at the same time. I think the best architecture comes out of challenges. If there's no problem to solve, you get uh, not a very interesting answer. But if there's problem to solve, you get a more interesting answer. And you can see on this building here, it has so many issues, so many challenges that it has to solve in the design that it has been a, a conic, actually an, an iconic uh, shape at the end. Not because we wanted to design it as an iconic shape, but because we want to solve all the different problems. It is not only the only the first high-rise we've done, but it's also, the, I think, the biggest transformation of a high-rise to a new high-rise that has been done in the world for now. It really shows that you can use an existing structure in a usable way, and you actually can get a brand new building out of it. Mm -hmm.